Hi, my name is Dr. Peggy Parker. I'm a biological medicine doc and a naturopath. And a few years ago, I made a discovery that promises to be a medical game changer. I discovered that ionized water has some unique antioxidant properties that are absolutely foundational for regaining or maintaining health. And in order to prove that theory into scientific certainty, I need to do a clinical trial study. And doing this study has been an absolutely overwhelming passion of mine for the last few years. And now all the pieces are in play and it's time for me to begin. The first time I heard about ionized water was actually during my biological medicine training. And I tried this water ionizer that was recommended and I didn't really like it. Then I got really sick. Actually, my gallbladder became gangrenous before doctors figured out what was wrong with me. And so when they tried to remove it, they left a lot of gangrene in my body. And so I was really literally rotting from the inside out. I was really sick, couldn't seem to get much better. I tried everything that my naturopathic and biological medicine taught me that had worked to help my patients, but it wasn't really doing much for me. And a friend of mine told me about ionized water and because I had a negative experience with it in the past I just ignored her and she kept talking to me about it and I kept being sick so one day I found out that there was um, a man coming from Japan to do a lecture so I decided to go to the lecture and during this three-hour lecture it took a long time because we had to do translation during the three-hour lecture I drank four 16 ounce glasses of this ionized water and every symptom that I had disappeared and it stayed gone for two full days. So I knew there was something important, I just couldn't figure out what it was. So I went home and I started thinking about it and then I was like, oh, I think I might understand what's happening. So I went and bought an ionizer, arranged for 10 of my uh, patients or friends who were all 60 years old or more to be part of an informal study. And they agreed to drink a certain amount of water every day and come back in after one week and two weeks and after a month to be tested. And so what I was doing is testing their blood, their urine, and their saliva and hooking them up to some machines and kind of looking at things. Their test results were tremendously better. So I wasn't, it wasn't based on symptoms. What I was looking at was how minerals were being uh, introduced into their cells, how uh, the PA, you know, how the cells would change pH and how the rates of oxidation were changing. And oxidation happens when free radicals bombard your cells and you have about 100 trillion cells in your body and every day each one of those cells are assaulted with 10,000 by 10,000 free radicals. That damage is called oxidation. Free radicals are really just atoms or molecules that have lost an electron and that happens um, from exposure to radiation or UV lights or um, so things like fluorescent light bulbs and computers and cell phones and cars and manufacturing plants and fertilizers and pesticides and even the water that we drink and the air that we breathe that are kind of polluted, those actually contain free radicals. All of those hundred trillion cells have a few things in common and one of them is that they're made uh, they all have a membrane and that membrane is made of something called a phospholipid bilayer. That's just a fancy term for fat. And fat is one of the things that's the most easily oxidized substances in your body. And we can see examples of that in your own kitchen. If you've ever fried anything and then later you try to clean that vent fan in your kitchen and that fat is thick and sticky, that's oxidized fat. Because our cell membranes are made primarily out of fat, as these free radicals enter our bodies, they start stealing electrons from the fat, causing a huge problem. That fat then changes its character. Instead of being a semi-permeable membrane that allows oxygen and water to flow freely in and, and lets carbon dioxide and a few other waste products out, instead of doing that, it starts to repel water, so the cell becomes dehydrated. It starts to repel oxygen, so now the cell doesn't have enough oxygen to produce energy. And inside the cell, carbon dioxide is trapped, and other waste products are trapped, so it effectively makes a very unhealthy cell. Well, 
those unhealthy cells will divide and multiply in your body just like all cells will. So healthy cells, unhealthy cells, they all do the same thing. They divide and make two new daughter cells that are identical to the parent cell. When that happens, we start to see tissues change. We start to see organs change. We start to see glandular systems change. And so wherever your genetic weakness is in your body, whether it's your eyes or your heart or your blood vessels or your skin or your pancreas, wherever the weak link is, that's where we're gonna see a disease process or an illness begin to form. And unless you've been living under a rock for the last few years, then you know about antioxidants. You know that vitamins A, C, and E are antioxidants, and you know that, that all the brightly colored fruits and vegetables even chocolate and coffee contain antioxidants. In theory, the more antioxidants you consume, the, the more uh, reversal of oxidation in your body or the more it will stop that free radical damage. But there's a little known fact about these antioxidants that we take in supplement form or in our foods, and that is that as they do the very thing they're designed to do, which is quench a free radical, it becomes a free radical itself. So it donated an electron to a really bad free radical, and in turn, it becomes a weak free radical. So you can see that it could slow down this process of aging and disease and death, but it could never really make a big enough impact to stop it. There's an interesting thing about ionized water. As I tested all of my patients, I began to see dramatic changes in the rates of oxidation on their cells. Couldn't figure out why. And then one day it was like a light bulb went off. I'm like, oh, this is about oxidation. What's happening is that as this oxidation disappears on their cells, everything else changes. I've been focusing on the wrong thing the whole time. My colleagues have been focusing on the wrong thing the whole time. I had a friend who said, you know what, this is just like hydrogen fuel cell technology. What happens in a hydrogen fuel cell is that water is passed through an electrical field, splits the water up, so H2O becomes OH negative and H. So we have hydrogen. And in the presence of platinum, which exists in all hydrogen fuel cells, those hydrogen easily, freely give up their electrons. So now what do we have? We have a bunch of free electrons. In hydrogen fuel cell technology, those free electrons are put down a little wire and we get electricity. In ionized water, what happens is that those free electrons are recycled into the water. So that as we drink that water, we're actually taking in a bunch of free electrons. Now those free electrons will go and mitigate or quench those free radicals and they don't leave anything in their wake. There's no weak free radical left over. This can actually stop the cycle of oxidation. Now in the whole scheme of um, clinical trial studies, the end result is always that there's a product, an end product that's made like a drug that can be sold for billions of dollars. So it, it offsets the cost of the clinical trial studies. In this particular case, I don't sell anything. I'm just trying to help people be well. My very first patient that I lost was 16 years old and it happened at a time when my one of my daughters was 16 years old. This was potentially the hardest thing I've ever been through. And all I could think of was how, what could I have done differently? How could I have helped her? And then a few years later, I found this technology and I realized that it was the answer to that question of what could I have done differently and how could I have helped her more. It's my passion to save the world one glass of water at a time. I know it sounds like a lofty goal, but I want to end as much disease and suffering in the world as I can, as fast as I can. I really believe this clinical trial study can be a medical game changer, but these things never happen as the result of just one person's effort. It takes so many people to accomplish a project like this. And with your support, I believe that we can move forward. I need you to help me spread the word. You can do it by emailing this video to everyone you know and ask all of your friends to do the same because I believe that together we can pioneer a change in the health of people all around the world.
one glass of water at a time. Thanks so much.